Hello, everybody. Thank you guys for being here. This is a special episode. We've got Ismael Perez backstage. So before we get started, I do want to share screen. If you guys don't already know where his real, so it's the real Ismael Perez YouTube channel. This is what it looks like. Go to it. I'm sure most of you are subscribed, but if you're not, you need to. So he's got a lot of great content over there. So make sure you subscribe, like, share. Share this video as well when it's done. It's going to be a good one. And also, for those of you that are new and coming across this channel, make sure you like and subscribe as well. Arcana Shores Tarot, this channel right here. All right, guys. So before I bring uh, Mr. Ishmael up front here, I am going to do our little message to Metatron. I think it's appropriate to start that way, start the show. So Metatron, Archangel of Ascension, thank you for coming to me with your energy that goes beyond time and space. As your magenta, indigo, and crystalline rays surround my being and all of the soul tribe, my soul adjusts to the here and now, and I find purpose in the present and allow divine guidance to carry me forward. My chakras align with love, and I prepare to create heaven on earth, and so it is. And there we go. That's for everybody, whether you're watching it now live with us or you're watching later. It's for everybody. So let's get down to it. We'd like to get right to the point here. Let's bring Ismael Perez up front here. And here he is. Hey there. How's it going, Ismael? Hi, Kristen. It's good seeing you again, sister. How you been? I'm doing great. I'm out in Florida where I belong, and I'm very happy. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So I'm excited to be back. Yeah, I see. You've been working really hard over there on your channel, looking good over there. You got lots of uh, hot content with the uh, truth or stuff. So yeah, I, I tune in when I can, but you're doing amazing over there. So the more spread the word, the better. And especially your positivity. We're in a lot of alignment with all of that, too. So, yeah, we all support you here. Thank you, Kristen. I appreciate that. Well, somebody has to hold a positive timeline. There are so many doomsayers out there right now, scaring everybody, thinking that that this solar eclipse is going to be the end of the world just because NASA's <laughs> three rockets towards the moon. And because they're going to restart up the Hadron Collider, the particle accelerator. And so, you know, a lot of people are buying into the fear porn and, you know, yeah. somebody has to, somebody has to keep every, somebody has to keep people on the positive line. In other words. <laughs> For real. It's getting crazy. There, you know, there's people that think it's doomsday. That's the end. Like this is it. You know, people are going to vanish and disappear. <laughs> nope. <Exactly>. <laughs> Not <laughs> at all. It's kind of silly to think that he, people really buy into this negative doomsday mentality, the apocalypse. You know, if people only really understood what the secret prophecies foretold, not the fake prophecies that we read about in the religious books, but the real prophecies. And, you know, yes, this solar event is going to signify something, but it's going to not be a negative thing. It's going to be a positive thing. You know, we are going to be witnessing an alignment. Um, and it is believed that it's going to be crossing seven cities called Nineveh. And seven years ago, exactly, when you think about God's number is 777, right? So seven years ago, we had a same eclipse that was crossing seven cities called Salem. So you have to really consider here that if you look at God's number, 777, that means many things in numerology. You know, it's it's a divine number. It's It means completion. It means God wins. And that perfectly ties in with the exposure of the dark side and everything that they've been doing wrong. You know, all the, all the stuff that they've done to humanity from behind the scenes. Which brings me to the announcement of my release of the secret government. Yes. Amazing. Yes. This is exciting, guys. So uh, it's in the description of the video already, but make sure you guys get your order in. Wow. Yeah. When I first came to the scene, I talked about how this was my very first book that I wrote back in 2008. And Kristen, back in 2008, before the Great Awakening, right, that emerged in 2016, thanks to the 17th letter of the alphabet and anonymous, mm -hmm. who, by the way, was a 
the, the, the reason they were disguised with those masks, right? V for Vendetta. Remember that channel? That back I remember. Mm-hmm. Yep. Corruption and, you know, everything that that is now, you know, reaching a large number of people. Well, that was a white hat operation. They were just disguising themselves. And one of the things that I unveiled in the secret government, and this is the reason why they took my book down back in 2008, after selling 3,000 copies, word of mouth, wow. they blacklisted me. They took it off of Amazon because it struck a chord. Apparently, somebody within these, you know, Luciferian secret society networks got a hold of the book. And you know what they said? I, I just got an anonymous message from a weird number saying, the reason we took your book down is because you revealed too much. That's what they said in the Ooh. message. And, of course, due to the fact that I have a lot of protection from the divine, you know, Archangel Michael has always been with me since day one. I also work with Archangel Melchizedek. And, mm -hmm. coincidentally, I'm so glad that you opened up this chat with... Uh, Metatron. Metatron, yeah. because Metatron is also one of my guides. So I call him the three M's, and this is the reason why the Cabal has never killed me or has never, you know, tried to do anything to me or my family because I am divinely guided and protected. Yes. The whole point is they took this book down. So for 17 years, this book was not in circulation. Wow. And it was in the last few days, I think it was maybe a week ago or even five days ago, I released it once again. Um, I did restructure it. Um, I had to rewrite it all over from scratch because the person who had the file, uh, who was my business partner back then, was actually, um, the file was stolen. The file was taken from him from one of the Cabal's um, members or somebody associated with those families. And they didn't want this book to ever be released again. But you know what I did, Kristen? I literally, I worked 12, 14 hours a day, only sleeping six hours a night. And I literally got an old copy that somebody gave me that they bought for five hundred dollars. Oh, I remember you saying that they were high priced. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and, and these were people that bought the original edition back in two thousand, mm -hmm. and I guess they've been selling it for five, six hundred dollars, which is ridiculous. But apparently, there are some people out there that were buying it because they wanted to know what yeah. you know, the information that was revealed in this book. And so I ended up getting a copy um, by one of my. Um, my followers and she said ishmael i bought this copy because i knew that you were going to be at this event i want you to have it so that was like five months ago five months ago wow. maybe even three months ago yeah three months ago at the conscious life expo back in february and what i did is i worked my fanny off to re reproduce the book and retype it in word document you know all 324 pages and it took me two months and i just structured it <laughs> Uh, because I wanted, okay. thank you because i wanted to bring it back out to the public because this book is also the prequel to our cosmic origin in order to understand the galactic history the battle between the galactic federation and the draconian orion empire well you have to also understand their 3d um counterparts the cabal which mm -hmm. is with the draconian reptilians right those have always been their overlords and even the the secret societies of the cabal they have always been structured where at the top of the pyramid you had a community of black magicians and sorcerers and this is what i call in my book the council of sorcerers the council of sorcerers and alistair crawley was part of that council but we don't hear about the other people right so throughout history um the secret government or maybe say the, the cabal uh it's it's a it's a it's a network that could be traceable back to babylon so I was able to place, yeah, the secret history all the way back to Babylon and everything that these guys took out of history in order to um, make themselves look like the victors. I was uh, I was able to, again, have access to those records. And I also had to read over 200 books, which, by the way, I do have reference. Now, this book does have reference. I had to read over 200 books. Over 60 percent of those books were suppressed and they were no longer in circulation. But I was able to consolidate all of that information. I was able to access some of the classified information to validate some of the information and reveal um, the entire workings of the system of the beast, which is what we call the Cabal families. Right. And what I've come to uncover in this book um, is the connection between the modern day NWO, um, in, you know, Illumina, I don't want to say that word, families, yeah. and how they are really just a front, a secret society front to the Vatican. Because at the end, Guess who controls all the negative secret societies, including the Freemasons? And they infiltrated the Freemasons, by the way, about 300 years ago. Mm -hmm. The Jesuits. 
the Jesuits are the culprits. Those are the ones that have been literally orchestrating and financing all the, you know, terror, all that stuff, all, all the bad stuff. I don't want. I want to use the keyword. All the bad stuff, including the assassination of white hat presidents. And what I did in this book is I had access to the people uh, in detail who these people were. You know, uh, so I, I threw everybody under the bus in this book. <laughs> yeah. How they how they orchestrated, you know, the the fall of the twin towers. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Man, well, that's exciting. So everybody, the link will be. It already is in the description of this video. But also, I saw on your website, so ourcosmicorigin.com. That's Ishmael's website, and you have some classes going on over there. I remember I uh, when you first had released. It was a couple years ago. You had the uh, on all the star seeds. I took that class, and it was awesome. So I see you have other classes going on too. Oh, this one is way better. This one is more advanced. I actually broke it down into four classes and oh. there's so much information to uncover. And it's, I, I broke away from the mystic arts, by the way. Um, I'm, I'm, I've gone solo, I'm no longer working with the mystic arts. So you're not, I'm not gonna teach Tarot cause that's not my thing. That That's Kristen's thing. If you guys wanna know about Tarot, sign up to her for her courses. But if Thank you guys- Thank you. Want to I have them, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Please. <laughs> but if you guys want to know about the galactic history, about the cosmic structure of uh, the cosmic and intergalactic councils, the different branches of the galactic uh, interdimensional councils of three worlds, and all of the different commanders, um, and the real history of the Earth, going back to Lyra, which spans not uh, hundreds of thousands, but millions of years, then take my course, because it's it's definitely, boom, it's mind-blowing. Um, oh, yeah. I just completed two courses and and all of my students are just like wow nobody has ever I've, I've, I've never had learned so much information in, just a, in a matter of four weeks i was just like they had to take notes because there was yeah. so much yeah. so much data so much intel that um, that i was able to you know release during my courses and i do offer also at the end of the fourth course i teach my two methods my techniques to actually access multi-dimensionality uh, your own Akashic records, your own past lives, so that people no longer have to consult other people for like, well, what am I? You know, who was I? In Atlantis? Yeah. You could actually uh, uh, implement these techniques and literally have access to your own spirit guides who will actually give you all the information that you need coming from your higher divine self. Right. Mm -hmm. Very nice. See, and, and no one teaches it that way. You're teaching and giving them, you know, that you're believing in them enough so that they can believe in themselves to discover and go within and find their own Akashic records. That's how it's done. So yeah, props to you. That's awesome. And your guides too. That's funny. Metatron's your guide. I, he's one of mine too. <laughs> For sure. That's awesome. And uh, I, do, I do have some people that have already left uh, some reviews uh, that have already read the secret government. They actually ordered it last week when I first announced it, and they they said they couldn't put it down. That's how, like, every chapter left them in suspense. So one person read it in one day. They just they, they said it was good. They just wanted to keep learning more and more. Um, if you guys thought that our cosmic origin was was mind blowing and and was you know dense with information, this is like just as good as that, or even better with all of the. You know, secret history that I uh, I was able to uh, uncover in this book. It's it's just it's it's fascinating, and and I am so lucky because within a matter of 24 hours of releasing the secret government, uh, Kristen, it became a uh, number one bestseller in its category. So that was wow. a blessing. Oh my gosh! Well, it's gonna happen again for sure. Yep. I feel amazing. Like <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, we have a lot of love for you in the chat. Everyone's happy you're here. I know I wanted to touch base on a few things because, um, you know, in my personal readings, working with the Soul Tribe here, mm -hmm. um, we're discovering together, and I am too. So the dreams are intensifying. Memory, you know, consciousness is just, we're expanding. We're evolving. Every day, it's just getting stronger and stronger. So this total solar eclipse, what do you think is going, what's the impact with that? Because mentally, yes, we have to be 5D mentally to enter the fifth dimension. And, I'll, you know, a lot of us are 5D. Um, mm -hmm. But those that are still evolving and wanting to be, longing to be 5D, what is the best advice that you can give them 
you know, mentally and consciously, what can they do to open them up stronger? The best thing to do is upon waking up every morning, it is very important to monitor your thoughts and really pay attention to the first thoughts that come into your mind because that, my friends, will set your sail for the day, but it's also going to set the mood for the next few days. Every morning is important to monitor your thoughts and your emotions because by virtue of your thoughts and your emotions, you're actually co-creating reality. Yes. And right now, um, we are constantly shifting from various parallel Earths. There are an infinite number of parallel Earth realities that are coexisting all at the same time. And this has actually been proven through quantum physics. They call it uh, superposition where anything is probable, anything is possible. So we do have a spectrum of negative timelines, which is what some of the people that have infiltrated our community saying, oh, you know, they're gonna fire up the collider. They're gonna open up a portal. They're gonna let, <laughs> you know, Satan back in and he's gonna wreak havoc and we're all gonna be doomed. Yeah. Or, you know, some people are saying, oh, they're gonna fire up these rockets to the moon and blah, blah, blah. I mean, that, that's part of the, that's that's counter information. That That's being generated by three letter agencies. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. In order to, they know the power of the collective mind. They know that if enough people really believe and buy into this doomsday uh, mentality, well, guess what? By virtue of having enough people right. believing it, you know, they create it. But yep. that's why I always tell the people that follow me, you know, don't buy into the doomsday mentality because your your thoughts, our collective thoughts is what ultimately determines the outcome. So, again, going back to what I was saying, um, right now there is an infinite number of parallel Earth realities in the spectrum of negative versions and positive versions, and they're all coexisting at the same time. From what I've received from the Galactics is that on the 8th, the White Hats are actually the ones that are firing up CERN in order to undo what the Cabal has been doing with CERN for the last 30 to 40 years. And what they've been doing is they've been taking off, they've, they've been altering us into different parallel Earth realities where the ascension never took place in 2012. The ascension was supposed to take place in 2012. And the only reason the new age didn't happen in 2012 and the great awakening is because of the fact that the dark cats have been manipulating um, through CERN our timeline and through of course, time wars, but they use CERN to throw us into alternative universes where, you know, all of a sudden we watch movies in the eighties and then we watch them again, like within the last decade and the movies are different, right? This is called the Mandela effect. Well, because of the fact that they have thrown us into various um, parallel realities, uh, the White Hats are now going to collapse all of those negative realities and bring us back to the positive timeline. And that's supposed to happen on the 8th of April. So from what, what I was told is that well, this is a new beginning for humanity. This is where the canvas is going to be clear for you, every single one of us, to begin, you know, um, generating and cultivating whatever reality you wish and you desire this is where also all the karma comes to an end we're going to all have a, a new beginning a clean slate as a result of collapsing all these multiple timelines into only three timelines so this is what i've been calling the bifurcation of timelines we're going to have the negative people going into the negative timeline and these are the wicked right and and for the wicked they're going to be oppressed they're going to be suppressed and oppressed through the technocratic dystopia they're going to end up in smart cities they're going to end up forced to be hooked through Neuralink. they're going to be forced to integrate with ai and become cyborgs okay whereas the good people of the earth the spiritual people those that are doing the work they're not going to experience that reality in fact it's going to be the opposite they're going to be going into an organic ascending timeline and that timeline or that bifurcation is going to happen as a, as a result of this eclipse and at the same time the galactics are monitoring the situation on Earth because, you know, right now as I speak, I don't know if you heard about this, Kristen, but as of like a month ago, the, the British royalty family yeah. stepped down. Uh, yeah. That's because about a month and a half ago, um, there was a treaty that was signed from what was left of the Cabal families with the Earth Alliance White Hats. And in this treaty, um, it was... A, a declaration of surrender on behalf of, the, of, of what was left of the public, of the clones, really, because we know that the real people have, were taken to Gitmo back in 2008. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So these 
codes that were generated by the AI matrix that uh, we were thrown into after the fall of Atlantis. I talked about how our current reality construct was generated by Enki and the fallen Anunnaki, uh, what the Bible calls the Nephilim, uh, the fallen angels, the Luciferian Anunnaki. They were work. They had already been working with AI, and so after the fall of Atlantis, they threw us into this this artificial construct, which which was really a reality uh, designed um, for these archons in the form of artificial intelligence and, of course, negative aliens like the reptilians to feed off of our suffering. And that's why for the last right. 2,000 years, most of humanity has been in a state of struggle and suffering because they created this reality so that they could feed the archons. But yeah. it's all coming to an end. On the 8th of April, that timeline comes to an end. And that's the beauty of this coming eclipse. It's not bad news. It's no. actually good news. We are about to enter a new era. So we're going to start seeing, after the 8th of April, we're going to start seeing all these positive things all of a sudden emerging. You know, so that's the beauty of what's going to be happening next week to answer your question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's exciting. And that's that's the truth, guys. That is purely the truth. And that's what we've been talking about on this channel. Uh, I have morning shows to set the morning off straight and good and positive. And we've been talking about that, too, because there's just so much fear, so much fear being thrown out there. No, it's not doomsday. No, don't go. You don't have to go stock up and go get all crazy. It's not the blackout. They're not going to give you a date for the blackout. <laughs> no. <laughs> so thank you for clarifying all of that. That's awesome. Um, also, I wanted to. Yeah. So this is another thing. I made a little banner so I wouldn't forget. I wanted to ask you this because when I'm channeling and, you know, after I have dreams, I write them down, too. But I am. Mm -hmm. I feel that I came back here not only because this is where I love to be, but I also feel that something's happening with all of us to where our soul is like longing to go or be or live where we have had past lives. I feel like because we're starting to remember our past lives, some of us, that we are, we're very drawn. Like, I feel like this is where I belong. And then I have I've always liked to travel, but suddenly I just don't want to, I don't want to leave this place. Like, I feel like I have to be here, you know, but a lot of others are feeling that too. In personal readings, I'm getting that, you know, so is there anything to that? Have you been picking up anything through your channeling? Well, I've said this before and I'll say it again as a reminder on the positive timeline, the earth is supposed to be the new headquarters of the entire universe, not just our galaxy guys but of the entire universe. This is where the new kingdom, the kingdom of God is going to be established for all life and all eternity. And the reason being is because of the fact that the earth will never experience a dark age again, because there is history, um, you know, due to the 25,000 year platonic year cycle that the earth uh, for millions of years, or may I say for billions of years, if you want to get technical, it has gone through cycles of golden ages and then dark ages golden ages and dark ages. And we've witnesses, witnessed this in the rise of, of civilizations like Lemuria and Atlantis. And even before Lemuria, we had Hyperborea. And even before Hyperborea, we had uh, Polaria. So if you think about it, um, now we are living in the best times ever because the earth is no longer going to experience any more dark ages. It's because of the fact that we're ending and culminating so many cycles that are immeasurable to our earth scientists see our earth scientists can only measure the movement of our local stars in terms of the constellations right they they, they, they call that astrology right the 12 houses of the zodiac so on and so forth in reference to the galactic court but mm -hmm. greater cycles that they can measure that is the cycle of our entire galaxy and what that means is that beyond a 25,000 year cycle which is what they call a platonic year we're also ending a 226 million year cycle, which is the equivalent of 5,200 platonic years. <laughs> wow. So, so the earth is about to become restored, a new heaven, a new earth, as indicated in all the holy books. A, a, a cosmic reset is going to be initiated as a result of this, you know, change that's coming to the earth, this positive era that is about to be witnessed by many, many people. And people always ask me, is this going to happen in our lifetime? And the answer is yes, because the AI construct, the false reality matrix that we've all been forced to exist in for the last 6,000, 10,000 years since the fall of Atlantis is all crumbling right now, guys. It's all crumbling. And that's why the dark side, through the Internet of Things, through 
uh, you know, the metaverse and, and, and digital avatars and, and augmented yeah. reality, they're trying to trick people through the 5G to enter a, an even further matrix that is going to entrap people in a cybernetic timeline. That's what I call the technocratic, technocratic dystopia. But at the same time, we have the 5D. We have the, the, the restoration of the 5D Earth, which was Earth in, as when she was known as Terra. And this was like Earth existing in dimensions 4, 5, and 6. But we also have the restoration of that timeline that is going to be um, you know, experienced as a result of this split in timelines that's coming. Yeah. Well, very interesting. I mean, and that's all happening. It, the, the times of evil are going away, the dark, dark ages. So yeah. this is a time of celebration, really. That's what I got from what you said. <laughs> it's, it's time to celebrate. Planetary, <laughs> it yeah, is. it's going to be a, a planetary, yeah. galactic, and universal jubilee because I failed to mention that we're also ending a 40 billion year cycle, which is the completion of our universe as it rotates around uh, the super universe of Orbiton. For those that read my book, you guys know what I'm talking about when I talk about the super universe of Orbiton. So, <laughs> that's awesome. Oh my gosh. So, there's a lot of questions in the chat. Um, would you like to address some of the truther stuff? Because it looks like sure. they're throwing it at you. Sure. Yeah, um, I, I don't know where it went, but there was one about the recent uh, bridge collapse. What is your take on that bridge collapse? Uh, yeah. What do you think? Well, because we are right now, there's tons of um, many parallel Earth realities. On, on a negative spectrum, we could say it was done by, by, by the what was left of the dark cats. It, as their final, you know, effort, right? They want to go out with the bang. Um, of course, then we're going to try to do something worse than that. But um, on a positive spectrum, on an alternative Earth reality, um, it was done by the good guys because it was believed that those bridges were used to transport a lot of the tra uh, human trafficking. Yes. So yes. It, it was done by the Y hats on a positive timeline. So again, it, it, this this all determines on which timeline you want to resonate with. And the choice is now, guys, don't feed into the fear porn. Start waking up uh, mm -hmm. and start intending your ideal reality of what heaven on earth is. And start, this is the time to manifest. This is the time to co-create on the positive timeline. So it's very important to stay away from the negative timeline because there's going to be a split. And once that split yep. happens, there's no turning back until the end of a thousand years when they collapse or when they wow. reunite again yeah, for the final battle. Yeah, we got to make sure we're on the right side, guys. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now, here's one for you. And it, it went by a few times about uh, Putin. You know, what is your take on that? What are your thoughts? Uh, he's he's the final card for the Earth Alliance. Uh, he's about to dissolve the European Union and NATO as we know it. So, okay. And at the same time, 45 it is going to have an imminent return, yes. imminent return, guys. And, soon. Um, and very soon, some, <laughs> some believe, according to some sources, some believe that that might even happen before November. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. So, I'm, uh, yeah. I'm placing a bet. I'm not making a prediction, guys, but I'm placing a bet that it happens in June. Yep. Sounds Bye about right. Yeah. Sounds I about hope right. so. <laughs> I hope but, so. no later, but no later for sure you know he will get his second term and when he does whether it's before november or by november we do know that this time he's going to not only drain the swamp but he's mm -hmm. also going to be implementing the new the new um you know nisera gisera um financial system yes oh yeah and the solar flash i think i remember is that in 2025 or some think it's this year they think it's the eclipse, honestly, <laughs> but it's it's not, right? <laughs> um, okay, so according to the weather reports, according to what they, you know, based on the cycle of the star of our sun and based on mm -hmm. um, the cycle of, of when our sun goes into solar maximum, uh, solar maximum starts this summer and it peaks at the spring of 2025. So it can happen before 2025. It could happen this summer. I've always believed that the EBS, which is the Emergency Broadcast System, through Project Odin, when the Earth Alliance takes over the Earth waves and begin to reveal to the, you know, to the sleeping masses the truth about the cabal, and, and disclosure begins. I believe I've always believed that that was going to happen simultaneously with the solar, with the Great Solar Flash, because that's the indicator that we are that we are done with the Dark Ages, 
in that we are about to begin the age of light, the age of love and light on earth. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. So that, that, that would be the way it would go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Joanna has a question about the animals. So will animals lifespan extend after the flash? Everybody's life, all living things on earth are being upgraded as I speak. It's not just happening to the human species. Yeah. All things, yeah. And, and also just as in stated in some of the prophecies, um, the, the wild animals are not gonna be you know, malicious and they're not gonna be carnivores. They're actually gonna be vegan and they're gonna be uh, gentle and we're gonna be able to have hour long conversations with bears and lions without getting attacked. <laughs> so they're also yeah. going to be they're also going to be transforming into benevolent creatures. Cool! Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's exciting for sure. And let's see. And also, oh, I know what I wanted to ask. Okay, so as we're ascending, I I feel it. A lot of our audience is feeling it too. But like, you kind of lose your appetite. I don't know. You don't really feel like the same. Your whole perspective changed. I mean, we know that the food out there is bad, but I mean, like, your appetite is kind of gone i don't know does anyone else experience that what is that <laughs> well what's happening is that our because our bodies are changing at the molecular level um new codons of genetic structures are unraveling as you know we do have 10 strands of dna that were disconnected uh during the times of atlantis in order to dumb us down um and so what's happening is because our bodies are changing at a stellar and a, at a molecular level um we are no longer feeling the hungry that we once were because we are becoming less dense we are literally beginning the first phase of the activation of our light body and once our light body is fully activated uh we will be fully ascended but first it has to happen consciously and mentally and what i mean by that is you have to begin to cultivate a fifth dimensional consciousness by applying the teachings of the unity of oneness, the teachings of the Buddha, the teachings of the Christ, and the teachings of every spiritual master that has walked before us, you know, service to others, uh, tolerance, non-judgment, um, living in, in harmony with all living things and recognizing the divinity in all living things, not just humans, but in animals and in nature, you know, seeing that God is in everyone and everything that is alive. And once you shift your mentality from I, the ego, to we, the collective, that's when they're ready to ascend. Wow. Beautifully said. Wow. Makes a lot of sense, too. And everyone, yep, everyone's feeling it, too. Except there's a couple in there that say they can't stop eating. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Let's see. I think it has something else to pull up as well. So getting into Atlantis, I know you know a lot about Atlantis. Um, I just, I can't find my banner. But anyways, I know that a lot of us are very connected to Atlantis, you know, and we're feeling it. Um, is there going to be a return of some of those, I, I don't know, some type of return of Atlantis or anything that they're going to resurface? I feel like because there's temples in Egypt with texts, I, I have something to pull up to. I'm doing a lot of research lately on it. That's why I'm all about it. But there are these messages. So it's one of the stories out there right now. But there's messages in Egypt on this famous temple. The name of it, it starts with an E, and I had it in a banner. One second. E, I guess it's Edfu, Edfu Temple in Egypt. Seems that there's text about Atlantis sinking, and it was written there before the fall of Atlantis. So, like, what are you sensing about this, or do you know anything about this? Well, we, we do know that Atlantis was taken over by the dark side in the form of the uh, negative aliens that were siding with the Draconians of Orion, the negative syndicate, um, through the personages of Anki, Poseidon, and his son Marduk, Belial Bal, who the Cabal have been sacrificing the little ones to for the last 12,000 years. Uh, so we do know that Atlantis collapsed because of them. They took over. Um, and according to the original oracles and the prophecies is that <clears throat> this is uh, going to sound a little strange, but there is a parallel react parallel earth reality where Atlantis was never infiltrated and it was mm -hmm. never taken over and it's still existing fully intact. And that's what we call the, uh, the fourth earth parallel reality. So we're part of the fifth earth parallel reality. Uh, there are four other ones where those ancient epochs, the first civilizations, Atlanteans, the Lemurians, the Hyperboreans, and the Paladorians never fell. They're still fully existing. 
So according to the secret prophecies, as we transition into the new earth, the original civilizations, all the ancient structures, they're all going to be there fully intact. And some people might perceive it as Atlantis rising in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh -huh. Some people might perceive it as Lemuria rising in the Pacific Ocean. But it's not that it's physically rising, of course, from a third dimensional perspective, it's going to seem like these continents are going to be rising. But in a fifth dimensional reality, they're already there, still existing fully intact. And all, all they're waiting for is for us to be translated into that reality upon the great solar flash. So yes, it is believed that Atl the Atlantean civilization and the Lemurian civilization are coming back when the new earth is here. All right, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're and waiting. We're, we're, we're ready for this. Is that a lot of us had uh, lifetimes in those epochs. You know, a lot of us were high priests and high priestess. Uh, a lot of us were involved in the building of these ancient temples, and a lot of us were involved in the building of the Great Pyramid. Believe mm -hmm. it or not, we just we have forgotten that ability, and we have forgotten that we were there when the Great Pyramids were being constructed uh, through advanced telepathy technology. It was yes. it wasn't external technology. We were using a group to let uh, telekinet telekinesis to levitate those big tons and putting them into perspective in alignment to the you know to the three stars of the belt of Orion, which is Mintaka, Amalek, and Amilam, where the councils of light come from Orion. Uh, of course, we we know them in in the mythology stories as Isis and Osiris, right? And the original gods of Egypt who were actually benevolent mm -hmm. uh, and on Horus. <laughs> But that's that's just to, to give you guys an example of uh, of how uh, we were all there as high priests and high priestess. So when the ascension takes place, we're going to be going undergoing a multi-dimensional integration of those of those selves that were we're still like wizards or we're still high priests and high priestess, mm -hmm. and we're going to regain back all that magical abilities, telekine telekinesis, telepathy, uh, teleportation, and much more. Nice, yeah, because that was all stripped away from us. Then we forgot it. It's like a amnesia when we came back here. But we're remembering. We're, we're getting it all back. We're going to have all that power back that we used to have magical powers. So cool. Yeah, and that's what's <laughs> going to happen in the ascending positive timeline. Uh, there won't be no need for external technology. We are going to be the technology. <laughs> yep. We are the ones that can do it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's really it's amazing. It's And it's exciting. Um, I think this is the best time to be here. So no wonder we all agreed to come back. This is why. Yep. Well, the, the ancient uh, prophets used to uh, call this time the, uh, the, the, the final dispensation, which is the restoration of humanity back into their divinity. And, and that's one of the, the key um, main philosophies that, that inspired and, and really motivated um, the, the Brotherhood of Light, which is what I call in my book, the secret, the... Uh, Secret of the Y Hats, the secret of the Y Hats, the secret history, I'm sorry. The Y Hats throughout the ages have always believed uh, fundamentally at the core of their belief structure. They've always believed that mankind was in a fallen state from, from, a, from their divinity. And, and their purpose, their purpose was to um, provide the proper education in order to re-exalt us back to our divinity, which is our multidimensionality, right? As immortals, as made in the image of God. However, the Dark Brotherhood, which is what I call the Cabal families, which originated in Babylon, they believe the opposite of that. They, they believe at the core that we were irrational animals and that we needed to be dominated and governed. And that's the reason why we've experienced tyranny for the last six, 10,000 years. But let me, get, don't get me wrong. There's been different moments of, in, in, in um, eras or pockets of life where you know, we had moments of enlightenment and, and golden, little golden ages here and there, little colonies, little nation state republics that existed throughout the last 600 years that actually were the ones that collapsed all the different empires. So that is the working of the White Hats in ancient times. These are the nation state republics that could be traceable back to uh, Atlantis, of course, the, you know, the councils of Atlantis. Yeah. Awesome. Well, they're loving it. This is great insight, incredible insight, Connie says, for sure. Yes. So, yeah, this is great. And your book is available on Amazon, but also through your website, I saw you can get there as well. So, guys, just yeah, make sure you get a copy. Make sure that if you guys want to get the, the $24 book, not the $500 book. <laughs> yeah. Uh, first of all, the cover looks like this. It, it doesn't look like the old book anymore. 
And uh, if you go through Amazon, just type in the secret government, invisible architect, secret power and lies. That's the full name now. Okay. All right. Very good, guys. And the link, I saw the moderators. You guys, thank you for sharing the link in the chat, too. So that's great. Yeah, oh, I gotta, I'm going to order a copy myself. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Oh, Kristen, you're going to be like, you, you're you going to be glued. You're probably not going to want to put it down. <laughs> I know. I have to read it on a day off. I have, I'll, I'll have to make a day off, but I can do that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'm looking forward to it. Well, this has been a fun show. Let's look in the chat. Let's see if we have some questions out there. Um, it's been very fun. But yeah, let me know if you see any questions out there on your end and feel free to just answer away. Let's see. Well, thank you, Connie Phillips, uh, for your beautiful compliment. Thank you. Thank you, sister. <laughs> okay, this is one from uh, Papa Rick. Will the restart of CERN reveal the second sun? Um, are you referring to Nibiru or Nemesis? I guess they're both one and the same. It, they're all, it's also known as the, the, the brown dwarf Shekinah. So the, we have the blue, blue star Shekinah, which is a, another battle star planet. Uh, again, you know, it is proven uh, through science that our solar system is part of a binary star system and that our star has a twin sister or a twin brother. Uh, I want to call it a twin sister. <laughs> and, <laughs> It is believed that that is the second sun, and um, but this time because of the fact that the planetary battle star uh, planet Nibiru has been also restored back to the Council of the Syrian, um, the Syrians and Galactic uh, Alliance, uh, it's not going to whack us this time. It's actually just going to be passing by. So we are going to be witnessing two suns very, very soon. Okay. Now, I don't know what's going to happen next week when they fire up CERN. It happens sometime. Uh, either before the solar flash or during the solar flash, we're going to be witnessing two suns. Wow, okay. On social media, I don't know if you guys seen it, but there's people that have captured pictures of two suns rising. I've One seen smaller. that. Yeah. yeah, I've seen the pictures. And, you know, at first I'm like, is it real? But then there's just so many people that have pictures of it. So I believe it. I do. You know, wow. It's amazing. I can't believe it. Wow. Any other questions out there, guys? Let's take a look. <laughs> oh, this one's a good one. A lot of people have been asking, uh, is it more, you know, are you going to get more benefit if you're in that, you know, betrayal of it? You mean like if you're at the at the cross of the uh, solar eclipse? Yeah. So here's the map. You know how they're saying that, oh, you should be in the, you know, in its route to see it. Is that is that the best or can you still feel the effects of it? I'm, we're all going to feel the effects of it, but does it well, matter? I don't think it matters because what's going to be happening is that uh, the sun is going to be increasing in its gamma ray frequencies. And so we're going to be receiving more uh, light codes. We have to, what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to be holding a global mass meditation on my YouTube channel, The Real Ishmael Perez, nice. from 10 a.m. Pacific time to 11 uh, a.m. Uh, Pacific time, which is one o'clock Eastern to two o'clock Eastern at the peak of the, you know, as it crosses through a city called Rapture. Um, and again, a lot of the doomsdayers are taking that and they're inverting it and they're trying to create this, oh, the, the end of the world. It's not going to happen like that, guys. And you know what I've noticed, Kristen? And mm -hmm. I don't have anything against fundamentalist Christians. Actually, you know, I grew up Christian, right? You know, yeah. the religion was forced to tell me. Uh, that was my original background, you know, before I woke up. But mm -hmm. a lot these fundamentalist religious, I noticed, and I see it on social media. That's why sometimes I don't even bother going on social media. Um, they're all telling us that, that that's going to be the rapture. This is the end of the world. That, you know, there's going to be the, what they call the tribulation and hell's going to be released on the earth. Why would you want to promote it, the idea that hell's going to be released on the earth and that only the good people are going to be going? I mean, it just, that, you know, it's being pushed by the religious organizations, I could see. But yeah. it's not going to happen that way. So... We, we have to, what what I recommend everyone doing next week when the solar eclipse is happening is whether you join me on this meditation or not, just take some time to just really just contemplate, meditate, pray, and just focus your intent on whatever it is that you want to manifest for the new earth. That is that is my recommendation for next week is nice. use your energy because, you know, I'm not the only one holding a meditation. I think there's a lot of people holding meditations. Uh, I had... Um, 
Vivian Chevet on my um, YouTube live last mm -hmm. night. She's holding a meditation. She's got a large following. She's I amazing. Think. Yeah. Oh, oh, you know who she is? You've heard of her? Yes, awesome. I watched actually. Yeah, it was very right. good. Yeah. Uh, we also have Cobra from Europe. And Cobra is another truther. He's been exposing a lot of this stuff too. Uh, he's holding a meditation. And I think three other truthers or you know, people in the scene are holding meditation. So it's going to mm -hmm. be a, a huge, huge collaboration. I, I think of almost 100,000, a few hundred thousand people. Um, which means that according to the Maharishi effect, that's going to have an effect on the collective. Oh, so yeah. if, we, if we could get everybody to just tune in to their heart, to be heart centered and just focus on their idea or their desire of what they want heaven on earth to be like, because that's what's going to happen, guys. This is going to be a new opportunity for us to begin manifesting on an individual level and for the collective next week, you know. Yeah, very powerful. So, guys, if I were you, I would just tune in to Ishmael's channel and watch it. <laughs> That's probably what I'm gonna do because I'm oh, not. Okay. I'm not doing one. I I will eventually, but this one, I think I'll let you do it. <laughs> I'll just tune in. But all of us could go over there and just uh, do the meditation. All of us, if you can't make it, just like Ishmael said, just you know, go within and, and take a moment to yourself and really just feel it. Go with it. Yeah, yeah. Especially, especially at the peak of the, you know, when when it's crossing over the town called Rapture, that's when you should really just take, even if you're at work, just just stop your, what you're doing and just take two to three minutes and just, just you know, be be mindful of what's happening and focus on your on your desire, focus your intention on what you want to create for yourself in the new earth. That's, that's my best advice because, you know, the energies of the sun, which is the gamma ray frequencies that are coming from the galactic core, um, are going to be amplified on that day, guys. This is going to be the time to really manifest, to really harness those energies and anchor in whatever you guys desire. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the time to rise for, for the children of light, you know, for the family of light here on the earth. Exactly. Yes. And Lisa has a question. So I think because we talked about the CERN and the eclipse, um, she wants to know about it. Is it going to be the CERN or the solar eclipse? Um, it's going to be both. Um, from what I, the intel that I got from from the Earth Alliance is that because of the fact that the dark hats have been using CERN to thwart us from our original timeline into different parallel Earths, right? Where you know history was slightly different. They call it the Mandela effect. I'm sure everybody knows what that is. But because of that, uh, this time they're going to collapse all of those negative timelines so that we could speed up the solar flash. So that way, like I said, you know, that um, that according to Earth, uh, what we call solar weather astronomy, they believe that the solar flash or what they call solar maximum, the peak of when the sun releases, uh, you know, uh, coronal mass ejections to the most maximum is going to happen between summer of this year and spring of 2025. And and even within the um, within what we call the um, the media, e even the mainstream media is telling people about <laughs> a possible Carrington event. That's yeah, what and wear glasses, special what? glasses. <laughs> they are saying that in the media. So even even they know in the mainstream media, even the cabal. Know, why do you think the cabal? families are they think they're going to escape this they're building these underground bunkers you know and, and they think that they're going to go into the underground bunkers to escape the solar flash because they think they're you know they, they, they could escape it but they, they, they don't know that the gamma rays frequencies are going to penetrate you know deep in the earth too and they're going to be burst they're going to be yeah. destroyed when this happens you can't escape this yeah no one can escape this <laughs> no Joe Robinson, thank you so much for your super sticker. We appreciate that. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, this has been a great show. It's so cool having you, you know, because we just like to talk to you about all these different things. I'm checking the comments again, guys. If you guys have any other questions before we wrap up the show, feel free. And again, to share screen, you guys, you wanna, if you're interested in taking um, a class with Ishmael, I really do suggest going there. I, like I said, I did it a couple years ago, but now it's even, it's probably more intriguing now since we know so much more. But yeah, take a look over there. So it's gonna be awesome. Our cosmicorigin.com. Very cool. Connie Phillips is asking, are they going to space prison? Well, I'll tell you this, Connie, the negative Anunnaki 
the draconian reptilians, the negative Zetas, and all of those mantis and insectoids that have been aligned with the Luciferian rebellion, um, they have been taken to some sort of a space prison. But it's not really like a prison here in the 3D where where, where they are behind you know bars and in, in, in a, in a right. walls. It's it's very similar to uh, to the prison in the movie Superman where they put him in this this like this phantom zone where they can't escape. And it's an alternative reality where they're stuck there for for millions of years. <laughs> yes. So, and so now what we're going to be waiting for is the final roundup of the of the clones, right? There's a there's a a reason why George Lucas wrote the movie the you know the, the Clone Wars because basically the people that have been in power in the last four or five years have been clones. They're all clones, guys. And yep. so we're just going to be witnessing the final elimination of these clones. Oh yeah. They're all going to be wiped out, you guys. Yeah, and I do have an opening, a few openings left for my uh, upcoming class, not to, not Saturday in two days, but the following Saturday. Oh, very cool. So you guys better jump on that because there's only two spots left. <laughs> yeah, there's the website there down at the bottom there. But you guys, I would jump on that for sure. But definitely get the book. I'm going to order the book for sure tonight. Thank you so much, uh, Doreen Mayer. Appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, anything else you would like to share? Anything yeah. else? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be uh, speaking at the uh, Biomed Alien Event uh, Expo here in Los Angeles at the Sonosta Hotel by LAX. Not oh. this coming weekend, but next weekend. Uh, I think it's the 12, 13, and 14. So I'm going to be uh, on the um, transhumanism panel against it. Uh, of course, Unfortunately, there are some people who infiltrate our community that are pro transhumanism and pro AI. I yeah. don't understand. So I'm going to be arguing against them. I'm also going to be on the planetary ascension panel. I'm also going to be speaking on the um, on the alien secret space program panel, and I'm also going to be doing my own uh, presentation where I'm going to be breaking down the entire 15 dimensional uh, cosmic structure of the multiverse and the different races out there and so on and so forth. That's fun. Well, yeah, you got a lot going on. That's going to be exciting. Well, anybody in that area, you guys should check it out. <laughs> oh, I know that live in Northern California in about three weeks on the 19th, 20th, and 21st, I'm going to be over at the uh, New Living Expo conference in San Rafael, which is about an hour from San Francisco. So for those folks that are in Oregon, just a few hour drive, you know, come meet me in person in San Rafael at the living, at the new living expo. It's called the new living expo. That's where I'm going to be in about three weeks. Pretty cool. And I do know, cause everyone here knows Mel Carmine. <laughs> so Mel has invited you to the June event as well. <laughs> so I whenever, yeah. So whenever you feel uh, to announce that, or if you are, that'd be cool, but yeah. I know Mel, he's been on me to keep promoting it and uh, get you to go. <laughs> what, you know, we have to, you have to let me know exactly uh, what days that falls into because I know my son is graduating either the first or second week of June and I have to be here gotcha. for my graduation. <laughs> gotcha, of course. I'll let him know <laughs> for sure. Well, this has been a lot of fun. We appreciate you coming on here. You're welcome anytime. Well, and uh, yeah, this will be fun. All uh, right. All right, guys. You guys have a good night. Bye. Thank you for coming and take care of yourselves. I'll see you guys in the morning. <laughs> Bye.